Today we're gonna to go over some TIG welding torch setup and we're gonna talk about tungsten stick out. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name is Dusty. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do welding projects in both two-dimensional and three-dimensional art surfaces. And on my YouTube channel, I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you're new to the channel, be sure, bounce back, check out the previous episodes. There's a ton of episodes there for you to watch. So today we're gonna go over some basic torch setup stuff. I posted a little video on my Instagram and somebody commented on my stick out being so long. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about when I say stick out, here's what I mean. It's the distance from the tip of your cup to the tip of the tungsten. That distance in between the two points is your tungsten stick out. Simple enough, right? As you can see in this photo from that exact video, I definitely have quite a bit of tungsten stick out for this pass here. I can understand that comment. There's a lot of stick out. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of info on why I have so much tungsten stick out for this pass here and why I sometimes set it up exactly like this. So the first thing I usually help someone with when I'm training them, whether it's in person or in my online training program, is really important with their torch setup. And that is to figure out how much tungsten and stick out they need. When somebody is first learning, I definitely encourage them to set up their torch with as little of tungsten stick out as they can get away with. Obviously, as you move your tungsten closer into the cup, you will lose a lot of your visibility. However, when you're first getting going with TIG welding, still a little bit shaky, you're gonna decrease the amount of dipping that you're gonna do considerably by having less tungsten stick out. And believe me, I remember this when I was first learning, this really helps out. Everybody's a little shaky when they first get going. This is one little trick that helps them from dipping a little bit less, myself included. So obviously we don't wanna push it in too far because like I said, you'll lose your visibility. So it's gonna be a sweet spot somewhere in the middle of pushing it in far enough that you can avoid dipping a little bit more frequently. However, not so far that you lose your visibility. As you can see with this photo again here, the visibility obviously is gonna be much better because the tungsten is out so much further. But again, you're gonna run the risk of dipping quite a bit. I see a lot of people who run glass cups for aluminum them. I run glass cups for all my stainless steel welding. I will, however, never run glass cups when I'm welding aluminum. It's just a personal preference, but here's why. These cups are really expensive. And when you dip with aluminum compared to dipping with stainless, dipping with aluminum is much more catastrophic in a very quick manner. So if I were to dip using my nice gear, a lot of splatter and all kinds of other crap is gonna spray inside of my cup and it's probably gonna end up wrecking the glass. That's why I don't run glass cups when I'm welding aluminum. So when you get a little bit more comfortable with TIG welding, you can start to push that distance of your stick out out a little bit further as you get a little more comfortable. A good general rule of thumb to start with when somebody's first getting going is never have your tungsten stick out any further out than the width of the opening of your cup. For example, if you have a number eight cup, that's gonna to equate to eight sixteenths or half of an inch. Did you know that? The cup number is the amount of sixteenths for the opening. I actually didn't even know that until not that long ago. Still learning. So in the instance of having a number eight cup, I will never have my stick out any further than eight sixteenths or half of an inch. Number seven, seven sixteenths, you get the idea. That'll be a bit of a sweet spot to keep an even gas flow for the amount of stick out that you're using. And also if you're getting set up with a new torch setup or a new machine, this is a great place to start. And as you get more comfortable with the setup, obviously you can fine tune and tinker around with these settings and setups after that. As you get more and more comfortable with your set out, you might find that you're starting to push your stick out out a little bit further than you maybe should. I do it in some circumstances, but when you do, you gotta make sure that you maintain adequate gas coverage. So the nice thing about running a longer stick out is you get better visibility, obviously like we talked about, but you actually tend to get a tighter arc cone. When your tungsten is in to a much shorter distance, you will get a wider arc cone. So for myself, I learned on a transformer type machine where I did not have a frequency setting. Frequency adjusts the width and size and behavior of your arc cone. So it's kind of an interesting way where you can actually manipulate your torch setup to kind of achieve this effect even without an inverter type machine. So for example, here it is again, when I'm doing a joint something like this, where the weld is gonna be really visible and I also wanna keep the weld quite small, I'm gonna pull that sucker out pretty far and I'm gonna get a nice tight arc cone. Longer stick out, you can see better, you can tighten up your arc cone. Now that I have inverter type machines here, I can turn the frequency up even higher and really narrow that thing down and get really fine tuned arc control. Anytime you wanna push your stick out a little bit further, I recommend using one of these. I can't remember the actual name for these things, but basically this is just a little meter that sits on the tip of your torch. It forms a tight seal around the cup of your torch and it gives you an accurate gas reading for actually how much gas is coming out of the end of your torch. There's a little ball that floats up and it will tell you accurately how much gas is coming out of the torch. Sometimes 
sometimes working pressures on regulators cannot give you an accurate reading. I have one in here where you compare the meter on the torch to the working pressure on the regulator. They're pretty close. I have another one, however, doesn't read close at all. So if you ever want to actually find out how much gas you're running through your torch, I recommend getting one of those for sure. So in this case, I actually turned my gas up somewhere in the range of five to 10 CFH. And I was able to do that weld without losing any quality of the gas flow I had coming out of the torch. And working pressure regulators are notoriously fussy for reading funny when your bottle gets to being almost empty. So if you ever have a nearly empty tank and you want an accurate reading, try one of those meters. So again, when you're learning, there will be a sweet spot when you're learning as far as your gas coverage, as well as visibility and control. So it's all a matter of preference. I always recommend with my students, start simple. Keep it controlled, keep it easy to keep out of the weld puddle. <laughs> And then as you get more comfortable, you can start to pull it out and tinker around with setups like this as you get more comfortable. So if you got any value from this episode, here's how you can repay me. You can go out today and I challenge you to do a random act of kindness for a stranger. It can be something big, it can be something small, it can be in person, it can be online, doesn't matter. We all gotta do our part to spread some positivity in the world right now, we need it. To all our kids who watch all the way to the end of every episode, I appreciate you as always. I hope everybody else enjoyed this episode here today. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode. Phil and Chill, talk soon, peace.